water from a faucet, <coughs> which pulls water from the water tablet. I'm telling you where the where the source is coming from of information of uh, of of water, which satisfies the antecedent. Obviously, you place a strain on the water table because exactly the same thing, right? Um, explanation of relation. It's basically just a reaffirmation. The water used. Uh, to water the grass is derived from, right, this is the justification, this is really important, right, is derived from. This being derived from, right, in, in my consequence, and I forgot to put this up here, this is my, this is my conclusion, right, or consequence rather, to be technical, must be technical. Right, this is my consequence. In my <clears throat> in my consequence, saying you don't have to use the same terminology, but in, in my consequence, I'm letting you know that I'm justified. My argument is inherently, I mean, this is a pretty solid argument, because I'm telling you that the source of the water that you use to why that you use to water your grass, irrespective of whether it comes from the faucet or it comes from the hose, both of these two different sources derive the water from the same place, right? The water table. Right, which which is exactly why the argument is as consistent as it is, right? So I've already augmented the nature of the argument. So let's just do a, a quick recap. So at the top, um, I think that's good. I'm just going to read this now. A lot of this just needs to be read because I don't really need to write much more except for maybe just one little bit. So one, what, what have I done here? One, I prepared this lecture um, not having any idea what example I would use, and I really didn't know. I was like, I know I'm going to use, I'm going to appropriate modus ponens to something. I don't know what I'm going to appropriate it to. I decided to do water table. It could be anything, as you see now. So I prepared this lecture not having any idea what example I would use, and at this moment, the time I was actually writing this, when I wrote that sentence um, in the lecture, I don't know, um, I don't know what I will add for the third example, but since my argument is guided by selection of modus ponens, and I did this selection prior to even knowing the content of my analysis, I can always use modus ponens as a guide. Again, again, use your rule of inference as a guide for your argument, and as I've just demonstrated, you can have a sentence that might fill each. Now we have a bona fide paragraph, right? And this, this that I have on the board is only this first line. Right, so now I have a paragraph. You can see quickly I can turn this into a page. And then with more skill and more skill, you can turn this into a few pages. You can turn this into, you know, maybe 40 or 50 pages, depending on the nature of your argument. Okay. So the second example is merely fleshed out. Right, I'm keeping this very introductory. What I've done in example number two is, as you've seen, here's the original example embedded in two, which is one. If you water your grass during the drought, then you place added strain on the water table, and what I've said to keep this sort of ghetto fabulous is I've just fleshed that out. I just fleshed that out by giving you more explanation on what I mean by that, right? So the second example is merely fleshed out via the linguistic use of clauses, content information, while preserving the integrity of modus ponens generally, right? It, it, this still maintains the general format of modus ponens, right? Any good logician could look at this argument and not see modus ponens and just look at the argument and be like, oh, this person used modus ponens. That's the other thing, it's sort of reverse engineering it, right? Going from the, the, the text to the logic, but I, no one really needs to do that. Only very, very professional ac academics look at the text and then sort of see what the logic is and assess the, the coherence of the logic. That's almost never the case that you need to apply it. I think what's really important, especially for people who write for a living, people who have to do sort of critical analysis and critical thinking is to begin with the logic and then create your argument based on that, which is what I'm, I just proved. All right, number three. For you, you should approach the academic writing, uh, approach academic writing in the same way. This is an intuitive approach, so it's more about how you feel amending the logic than conforming to some set of um, definitive rules, right? Don't, a lot, don't feel stuffy. Don't let the logic inhibits you, you say, I don't obsess, does this still maintain the same form if I put this there? I mean, it looks basically the same. If it looks basically the same, if it feels basically the same, if it sounds basically the same, we'll just call it modus ponens. Right? That's the vibe. 
the vibe is not, is it categorically conforming to all of that, that's, that you're never going to get anywhere. It's going to stymie your growth, it's going to stymie, it's going to discourage you. Um, the idea is, it has the basic form of modus ponens, we know how to build on it, then we can add content information, that's, as, that's all we need to do. That's all we need to do. Okay, so maintaining the general form of logic is a perfect introduction to writing with more complexity. So you must first begin with the logic. So, example number three now. I wish I had another color. I don't have any more colors. So I'm going to go back to black. I should have had another color. Yeah, we'll go back to black. So now, example number three, um, I keep basically exactly the same. I don't add anything internally here into my argument, but what I do add is something after the consequence, right? So we'll read, I'll read number three, and then I'll just add something that I tagged on to show you that I'm deliberately not going to force myself to conform inherently to the format of modus ponens, but it helps my argument, and I'll show you in a second. So everything's the same. If you water your grass during a drought by using a water hose or water from your faucet, which pulls water from the water table, then you place added strain on the water table because the water used to water your grass is derived from the water table. What I've added now is the following. Right? I've added, again, right, to make this even longer. Don't take my word for it. This next, this next bit, to keep it real introductory, is like, don't take my word for it. Right? That might sound well and good to you. You might not know that I've appropriated modus ponens in the construction of this argument. Don't take my word for it. Here is an appeal, right? The Nebraska Department of Environmental Quality states. So, the I might not even be able to get all this on, it, on here. The Nebraska Department of Environmental Quality The, environmental, the Nebraska Department of Environmental Quality states, what do they state? Drought obviously impacts groundwater quantity. That's a perfect quote. That's a perfect quote for this example, right? And what I really did, honestly, in constructing this is, I knew I had my format, I was going to use modus ponens. I decided I was going to talk about water ta table. I sort of have a general feeling of what the relationship is between, you know, the, the use of water and the effects that it has on conservation. I went to Google, I typed in sort of like water table droughts, check EDU site, hit enter. I found a quote that fits perfectly into my argument and I referenced it. All right? This is the appropriate use of citation. All right? So then drought obviously, this is the quote now, drought, and I really couldn't find a better quote, right? Drought obviously impacts groundwater quantity uh, quanti and then quantities underlined. Okay, what I've really done here so that you can really see what happened was I began with my initial appropriation of modus ponens. I fleshed out my initial appropriation of modus ponens by giving clause and explanation explanation. This new bit really doesn't apply, it doesn't conform in any way to modus ponens, but what it, if you think about it conceptually, it's initial version of modus ponens, expanded version of modus ponens, and after I fully expanded modus ponens, then I'm going to cite. I'm going to cite something to support my appropriation of the logic. If you write like this, you can't lose. You can't lose if you write like this, right? It's, it's okay, I'm going to start with my thought. It's going to be sort of basic. Okay, let me return to my thought and flesh it out. Let me make that bigger. Let me, let me add more content information. Okay, I've done that. Now, what I need to do is, well, first I take comfort in the fact that I know that I'm being consistent, right? And that my conclusion is valid, necessarily, um, in this appropriation. Now, I just need to give some textual support. Find the citation, plug the citation in it. My logic is consistent. I reference someone who supports the argument that I'm making. I mean, this is excellent academic writing 101. Then um, what I've done here, I'm not going to read necessarily all of all of this because I just go through and explain what I've done. Uh, everything is the same. 
until we get to this point, right? So everything is the same 